The future value of compound interest formula is used to calculate the growth of an investment over time. To understand how this formula can do this, we must first understand the principle of compound interest. Compound interest works by taking your initial principal amount, then adding the interest earned on that amount over one period and repeating this process for each compounding period. This results in your investment growing exponentially, since the interest accrued is added to the principal after each period, creating a larger base for future interest calculations. So suppose you decide to invest $1,000 worth of savings into an account that is offering a return of 10% annually for the next five years. And you want to know how much this investment will grow to by the end of the fifth year. The future value formula allows us to calculate this value almost effortlessly. Substituting 1,000 as PV, which is your present value, 10% as a decimal into I, which is your interest per period, and 5 into N, which is the total number of compounding periods, we learned that by the end of the fifth year, your initial savings of 1,000 will mature to $1,610.51. Knowing how to calculate this without the formula is the key to understanding its derivation. Let's recalculate this manually as if the formula didn't exist. Then we'll piece together how it all works. To calculate the interest earned on any amount after a single period, simply take the invested amount and multiply it to the interest rate made into a decimal. The output, which now represents a portion of the investment, also represents the interest earned after one period. For example, if you decide to invest $1,000 into an account today for one whole year at 10% annual interest, you can calculate the interest earned by multiplying $1,000 by 0 0.1, since 10% is 0 0.1 as a decimal, and this equals to $100. Therefore, by the end of the year, you will have earned $100. Furthermore, if we combine the principal investment of $1,000 with the interest earned, the future value after one year is $1,100. Let's generalize these two equations using variables instead. For the first one, we will replace the investment amount with PV replace 0 0.1 with I for interest, and the interest earned with P for portion. For the second equation, we take the present value of 1,000 and add it to the interest earned, which we denoted as P. Adding these two amounts gives us the future value of our investment after a single period. Therefore, we can say that the future value after one period is always calculated using the formula FV is equal to PV plus P, or more specifically, FV is equal to PV plus PV times I, since P decomposes into PV times I. Notice that the future value of this investment after a single period is really no different than finding a 10% increase of the initial investment. Now using some basic algebra, this formula can be manipulated to FV is equal to PV times 1 plus I in parentheses, without changing its meaning. So that's the future value after one period, in our case one year. What about two years, or three years, or 100 years? When it comes to compound interest, we are reinvesting our earnings after each period back into the account. So technically, if I wanted to find the future value a year later, and knowing that it is calculated using FV is equal to PV times 1 plus I, all I would have to do is substitute 1,100 back into PV and 0 0.1 back into I since the interest rate hasn't changed. This would output $1,210, or a gain of $210 after two years. Repeating this three more times leads us to the exact output we obtained when we simply used the formula. While it seems reasonable to calculate the future value in chunks like this, you're simply better off using a formula that can do it all in one shot. To generalize what we did, simply place the entire right side of FV which represents the base value at the start of a period, back into PV. This produces the equation FV is equal to PV times 1 plus I times 1 plus I. Notice that the two factors of 1 plus I also correspond to the two periods the money was left to mature. Repeating this for a third period would lead to three factors of 1 plus I. After five years, the repetitions would eventually lead to five factors of 1 plus I which corresponds to the number of compounding periods. We can shorten this by writing the equation in exponential form instead, where the exponent n represents the number of periods we choose to compound our initial investment. Now in our scenario, the interest was being compounded annually, so we left the annual interest rate i as it was. But if the interest is compounded more frequently, 
such as semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly, we need to adjust the interest rate accordingly. For example, if the interest is compounded semi-annually, it means that the present value is being compounded twice a year. In situations like these, our value of i is found by dividing the given interest rate, which we call r, by the number of compounding periods in a year, which we call t. Our value of n is found by taking t and multiplying it to the number of years we plan to keep our money into the account, and this becomes our n value. This ensures that the interest rate is properly adjusted to account for the increased compounding frequency. To account for these changes, which are made when interest is compounded more frequently than yearly, the alternative formula can be used instead. Notice how in place of i we have r over t, and in place of n we have m times t. Whether you're saving for retirement, planning for your child's education, or building wealth for the future, understanding this concept is essential. Hope you found this tutorial helpful and can use it to make better financial decisions. Thanks for watching.